Week 8 of the college football season is in the books. We had some banger-ass matchups. Let's get into my recap and see what happened all over the world. We're going to start off with Nebraska versus Indiana. I got this game so fucking wrong. So fucking wrong. I should have known they were begging you to take Nebraska. Holy fuck. 7 to 56? 56 points? Nebraska! You allowed them to score 56 points on your heads? What the fuck? I don't think the word defense exists in Nebraska after what happened in this game. Holy shit! What a beating! What an absolute beating they gave, Indiana gave to Nebraska. They're fucking ranked in the top 20. And goddamn, this team is just flying right now. They are flying. To beat a team like Nebraska, 56 to 7 is insane. I thought Nebraska was actually pretty good. They didn't stand a chance in this game. They didn't have a fucking chance. It was over by the time Indiana scored the first touchdown. It was insane. What an absolute embarrassment. Embarrassment on my part for even picking Nebraska to cover, let alone win the game. Whoa. Indiana... Y'all are fucking good this year. However, I don't think you guys are going to be competing for the top, top seeds, top, top silverware, we'll call it. Good squad. Great coaching, by the way. Whoever this fucking head, I don't know his fucking name yet. I will learn it eventually. This head coach, this dude is going to get some serious, serious job offers in all over SEC, Big Ten, shit, maybe even NFL. But more likely than not, he's going to leave, go somewhere, bigger school with a lot more money. That's not here nor there. Great win, Indiana. Great fucking win. You impressed the fuck out of me. I mean, holy shit. What an absolute beating you put on to Indiana. I mean, uh, Nebraska. As for Nebraska, y'all got to step your game up. You're 5-2, and two, which is not horrible. But after suffering such an embarrassing loss, your morale and mentality may be hurt. And it could affect the way you play the rest of the season. So Indiana could have just destroyed Nebraska's whole season, if we're being honest. But I expect Matt Rule is a good coach. He has control over his players. I believe Nebraska will bounce back and win a few games. Now, I don't know if they're going to make the playoffs now with two losses. But shit. They, they are still alive. We'll put it like that. Great fucking win, Indiana. Next game. Auburn versus Missouri. This was a game where I really thought Missouri was about to get fraud checked so badly by the dog shit 2 and 4 at the time, now 2 and 5 Auburn team. Unbelievable. Auburn had control of this game for the majority of it. And just at the very last second, it was 17-14 and Missouri comes in there late in the game and scores a tutty. Very important tutty. Not only did this tutty win them the game, but they also covered the spread. If y'all remember, the spread was like three and a half, four, depending on when you got it. Missouri fucking covered this shit. Somehow, some way, in a horrible performance. This is a game where both teams lost. Auburn is absolute shit this season. They're not even going to play in a bowl game, fuck, fucking let alone playoff. Forget about the playoff. That shit was over after week one. Two and five, their season's all but over. Yet, they pushed Missouri to the absolute limit. Missouri is 6-1, and one, and I don't want to say is a fraudulent 6-1, and one, but damn it, they are fraudulent 6-1. and one. You damn near lost to Auburn, and you damn near lost to Boston College. Not teams that you should be beating the shit out of. Like, the shit out of. I'm shocked. I really thought uh, fucking Missouri was going to lose this game. I know their quarterback, Cook, got injured in the middle of the game. And I don't know what the fuck happened at, uh, in the locker room or whatever. Apparently, he went to the hospital and came back. Reality is that what they're probably not going to tell you is they injected this guy with all types of fucking Toradol and Percocet and any type of fucking painkiller you can imagine so he can go out there and ball out because that's what they probably do more likely than not under the table. But nevertheless, I don't give a fuck. They went out there. They won for me. They covered for me. And that's what I like to see. Now, I was very high on Missouri going into the season, uh, that that expectations have dropped, dropped, dropped. My view on Missouri is completely different now. They 
could make it in the playoff. They can compete in the SEC. However, they are going to get absolutely slaughtered by a good team. Like, slaughtered. If they play like this versus a good SEC team, or even a good Big Ten team, good lord. Say goodnight, Missouri, because you're not winning shit. Auburn just sucks balls, and that's the only reason you were able to scrape out a win when you had no business winning this game, even with all the missed field goals and all the miscues. Nevertheless, Missouri wins. They cover. I win. They're 6-1. and one. So... I don't know if we could really complain, right? A win is a win. Who cares how you do it as long as you do it. Next game. One of the games of the week, Miami versus Louisville in a final score of 52 to 45. And I feel like this score doesn't do Miami justice because they were up by 14 late in the fourth and Louisville scored like a garbage time cut touchdown to cut it down to seven, which doesn't really matter. Miami played their asses off. But the key aspect of it is that are they really as good as we think we are? they are? Offensively, they are amazing. 52 points on a Louisville team is impressive as hell. But they allowed 45 points. You play a stronger team, Big Ten, SEC, even a decent little ACC school. Like, for example, I don't think that Miami can have this type of performance against Clemson and win the game. You need some sort of defense. Like, some sort of defense. 45 points is inexcusable. You score 52, I get it. But 45 points is just inexcusable. Ward played lights out. Lights out. And with all this being said, Miami played so, so well offensively. I think, I really do, and y'all could argue with me in the comment section, that Miami should have at least lost it or went to overtime or much been closer. If y'all remember... Right before Miami scored their final touchdown, when it was whatever it would have been, 45 to 38, right? If I'm not mistaken, yes, 45 38, late in the fourth quarter, Cam Ward's arm gets hit. On the field, they call it a fumble. Louisville takes it back all the way, scores a tutty, and then the refs go over and call it an incomplete pass for Cam Ward. Obviously, Miami then goes on to score a touchdown and take a 14-point lead, essentially ending any chance of Louisville coming back. Maybe I was viewing it from too much of a biased perspective, but I genuinely thought in the moment, and even re-watching it, it was a fumble. Yes, his hand was in the forward motion, but the contact made to his arm was prior to the forward motion. I'm not an expert on the rules of college football, but wouldn't that constitute a fumble or at least a forced fumble? Again, I'm not a ref. I'm not an expert of college football rule. Miami guys, maybe you can fucking argue with me and tell me why it's not a fumble. But personally, I thought Louisville should have been awarded that fumble and the game should have been tied late in the fourth. Nevertheless, Miami played their asses off. Great offensive performance. But if they want to make a deep run this season, they need to tighten up that defense just a bit. Just a bit. Next game, South Carolina versus Oklahoma. And this game, I had a smile on my face the entirety of it. Oklahoma, I've been telling you guys, is fucking trash. This team is incapable of conducting a fluid offense and their defense is just as bad. I think too many people are stuck in this mentality of Oklahoma still in the Lincoln Riley era with Baker, with Kyler, with Caleb, even with fucking Rattler. This team is a shell of itself. Those days are so long in the past. Forget about them. Forget about them. Oklahoma is so fucking bad and they're going to continue to embarrass themselves in the SEC because they are not playing SEC level football. That shit slides in the Big 12. Not in the SEC. No, sir. This game was over within five minutes. I've never seen something like this in my life. I wasn't watching this game actively. I had some shit to do. But as I was doing my shit, I uh, checked the score. Checked the score quickly. South Carolina scores a tutty. About two minutes later, South Carolina scores another tutty. About a minute later, South Carolina scored another tutty. Within the first five minutes of this game, by the time the first quarter 10-minute mark hit... South Carolina was up 21-0. 21-0. Oklahoma scored nine points in the entirety of the game. I mean, holy shit. This was just an absolute pure 
domination on the end of South Carolina. From a defensive perspective, from an offensive perspective, all around, South Carolina played lights out. Lights out, man. Good win. Good win for the fucking Cox. You love to see the Cox up and big and strong, but Oklahoma's dog shit. Dog shit, dog shit, dog shit. I want a couple dollars on this game, thank God. But God damn it, I'm just happy South Carolina proved me right. They have been covering machines for me. They continue to cover, 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 cover. And I'm going to continue to bet them to cover, cover, and cover. Because they just are, they play so hard. And they play so good, fo- such good football. That it's like offensive, good. Uh, offensive is pretty strong, right? You got the Rocket Sanders, he's a good running back. You got Lenore Sellers, he's a great, I don't want to say great. He's a good quarterback. And the defense overall is pretty strong. Easy win for South Carolina. Easy. Not even a sweat off my back. Psh, good shit, South Carolina. Let's move on to the next game. All right, we got Michigan versus Illinois. In a bit of a weird one, I feel that Illinois didn't play as well as they could have played. But they did what they had to do. Final score of 21-7 to isn't necessarily great. But it goes to show this Michigan team's offense is just absent. There's no offense. I mean, literally no offense on the part of Michigan whatsoever. They cannot, for the life of them, move the ball down the field whatsoever. The issue stems from quarterback play. That's the reality. Their run game is super effective, but you can't have an effective run game if everybody knows all you're going to do is run. You have to have some sort of play action or passing attack that gets people to defend and respect your throw. Because why would they respect the passing game when they know all you're going to try to do is run it down their throats? Michigan needs a quarterback. This season is a waste of a season for them because they have no quarterback. They need to go to the transfer portal next season and spend God knows how much money on a decent quarterback. Because the way they're playing now, not great. Not great at all. As for Illinois, let's start with one. Those jerseys were fucking disgusting. They were disgusting. I know it was some kind of 100-year anniversary, blah, 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 blah. Please never show me those fucking jerseys ever again. I Last time I checked, it's 2024, not 1924. Good Lord. Stop with that leather helmet shit. And even if it wasn't a leather helmet, obviously I get it, but it was painted like it's a leather helmet. Come on. Nasty. Uh, good win in the Illinois. Y'all played well enough. I don't know how well you would have played if this was like an Ohio State or a fucking uh, Oregon, but you did what you had to do to beat Michigan. And that's all that mattered for this week. You covered, you won. That's what I like to see. Good shit, Illinois. Y'all played your asses off. And that's what you got to do. That's what you got to do. Next game. Alabama versus Tennessee in a tough game. This was a tough game to watch. Tough game, especially if you were rooting for Alabama. I was kind of rooting for Alabama in this one. I had Alabama to win, Alabama to cover. And clearly, they did not do either of those things. It was interesting, right? Because Tennessee offense was non-existent. Just absolutely non-existent the entirety of the game. Or at least the entirety of the first half. And then that second half, they just turned it on to a whole new level. I mean, a whole new level. The run game just started going crazy. This Samson kid ran all over Alabama. They made Alabama's defense look like, look like some high school defense. It was unbelievable. And they just turned up, turned the fuck up, scoring 24 in the second half, which is impressive as hell. Alabama couldn't stop a nosebleed in that second half, and that's why they lost the game. The other reason why they lost their game. A man by the name of Jalen Milrow. His Heisman campaign lasted longer, or I should say just as long as Aaron Rodgers' 2023 season. I mean, seriously. What the fuck was he doing out there? The amount of overthrows this man had was just embarrassing. Overthrow after overthrow after overthrow. What are you doing? Are you a quarterback or are you a fucking running back? Like, please explain to me, bro. Because the way you're throwing the ball, I think you should move to a running back position, clearly. Because you have no business, no business airmailing, airmailing receivers who are wide open. He had, late in the fourth, 
He had a receiver wide open, and the man just throws it so far past his head. Forget about even catching it. He couldn't even jump up for it. That's how high it was. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Jalen Milrow, you suck balls. You are not the single reason why they lost, Alabama lost this game, but God damn it, you are a big reason why they did. At this point, Kalen DeBoer needs to bring me in as a fucking quarterback because at least I won't fucking airmail it 30 yards over the receiver. Are you fucking kidding me? DeBoer also, I should mention, is a pretty shit head coach. It feels that this Alabama team lacks the discipline that they had under Saban, which, I mean, it's self-explanatory. Saban is Saban. We all know this man took no shit from nobody. But, man. I miss Alabama when they were good. Not this bullshit, losing to fucking Tennessee in an embarrassing ass fashion in which they kind of, I don't want to say dominate the first half, but control the first half in the, to their liking. Disgusting. Disgusting display from Alabama. Y'all should be ashamed of yourself. Jalen Milrow, you're going to be fucking putting the fries in the bag next season the way you've been playing, boy. Look, good win, Tennessee. Good win, but y'all need to play better in the first half. This is the third week in a row where you just look so lackluster in the first half and you can't keep on doing this because you're going to end up losing more and more and more. You can't. 24 points in the total game is fine, but 24 points in the second half after scoring nothing and doing nothing in the first, it's not. It's inexcusable. Inexcusable. You need to step up your game, especially in the first half, if you consider yourself contenders, you know? Next game. LSU versus Arkansas. I was dead wrong about this one too. Arkansas got their ass handed to them. And it's not, this analysis of this game isn't too deep. LSU just completely outplayed them. And I'm going to have to start buying into the LSU hype. That's the reality. I keep doubting LSU and they keep proving to me that they are not the same team they were in week one. They're not the same team that they were in past years. Since I guess you could say Burrow left in reality. LSU beat the living shit out of Arkansas. Arkansas never stood a chance in this game. LSU dominated them offensively. They dominated them defensively and just showed an absolute masterclass display. They're in the top 10. They're looking hotter and hotter every week, especially with teams like Alabama lowering, dropping a few games. Um, Tennessee not looking as great. Put it this way. If LSU plays Tennessee right in this moment, I got LSU. Because right now, LSU has a decent offense with a decent defense, while Tennessee does not. Good win, LSU. I wish you could give more analysis of this game, but there is nothing to give. They beat the shit out of Arkansas. I guess Arkansas had a good moment versus Tennessee, and they're not as good as we all expected them to. They're decent, but not on the level of an LSU who just beat the shit out of them. Beat the absolute shit out of them. Great job, LSU. Y'all balled your asses off. And y'all keep impressing me. I'm starting to buy into the LSU hype. I, I really am. I really am. Next game, we have a tough game. Tough game. It was the final game as well. Georgia versus Texas. Oh, it's like a fucking dagger was stabbed into my heart watching this game. Oh, seeing that first half, 23-0. Mm, embarrassment. Absolute embarrassment. I really had a lot of hope for Texas, I really thought they were going to go out there, do the job, win the game, but they didn't. They got outplayed badly, badly in that first half. And the sad reality, if you watch that game, Texas gave Georgia so many points, so many points in that first half when it was 23-0. I swear, at least 14, if not 17, of those points were just gifted by Texas. The amount of times that Georgia started their drive either in Texas territory or just like right outside of Texas territory, like their own, like Georgia's own 40, was just too many times. More effective punting, more effective defensive, and more conservative offense was needed. Texas got outplayed. Plain and simple. Texas got outplayed. Even with the refs gifting. And I'll admit, it was a bit of gift, right? Because you call it a pass interference initially. The fans start booing and throwing shit on, onto the field. You huddle together and pick up the flag. 
call it up interception. Mm, it's not great. It's not great at all. Refs looked a little weak there. And I, I'll admit, they, they gifted Texas a bit of a blessing, right? Regardless, it didn't end up mattering in the long run because they still lost by fucking 15 points. They got completely outplayed. I got to give it to Kirby. He came in with a great game plan and did what they had to do. More importantly, the aspect of Georgia's game, which has been the weakest in their offense, was the running game. And Trevor Etienne had a great game. And the overall run game was pretty strong on the part of Georgia. Carson Beck played absolutely horrible. The man is a fraud. Whoever drafts him, it better not be in the first round. And if it is, y'all are getting a bust because he is a turnover machine and makes these horrible, horrible decisions for some reason. I'm not sold on Carson Beck. And in the reality of this situation, the only positive aspect of Carson Beck is that he's dating one of the Cavender twins, which I got to give him credit for. They're bad as fuck. Besides that, he's ass and won't be shit in the NFL and will continue to be horrible the rest of the season. I still think Texas is winning the natty. You think one loss and I'm just going to give up? Fuck no. We needed to lose this game to humble ourselves. Now, Texas has a mentality. They're ready to lose because they've lost. Yeah, I said what I said. They are weathering the storm. When come to, when push comes to shove and it's playoff time, they are not going to be afraid of Georgia. You know what? I'm going to say it right here, right now. It is October 21st, and i saying it right now. I want Texas versus Georgia in the college football playoff. That's how confident I am. Texas will beat them the second time around. I'm that confident. Georgia played well. They had a great win. I'm going to give them the credit they deserve. They deserve it. But Texas will triumph in the end. They are the better team and they are winning the Natty in January of 2025. You heard it here first. I'll keep saying it like I've been saying. One loss does not change anything. It was a great week eight of the college football season. Hopefully week nine is even better because college football this year has been absolutely amazing. Clearly these conference realignments and all the new formats is working. It's becoming any given Saturday and the games are just unbelievable. I love this style of football entertainment from 12 p.m. all the way to 10 p.m. I love it. See you in the next video.